Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Genesis, chapter 8, the 22nd verse. The Bible says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, Day and night shall not cease. Did you hear that? He says, while the earth remaineth, seed time, harvest, cold, heat, summer, winter, day and night, they shall not cease. Praise God. They shall not cease. They shall not cease. Somebody shout hallelujah. For as long as the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, these things will never change. Praise the Lord. In fact, the Hebrew word for yah, okay, these are all elements of the yah, isn't it? The year has cold, it has heat, it has summer, it has winter, it has day and night. All of these are elements of the day into the year, of months into the year. You understand? And on the face of the earth, there are things that will always be constant. They will always be constant. They will always be constant. Are you following what I'm saying? As long as the earth remains. Sea time and harvest. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. Day and night. They will never cease. You understand? Every year there is a part that will be hot. Every year there is a time it will be cold. Every year there is a time it will be summer. Every year there is a time it will be winter. Every year there will be a day. And every year, there will be night. Those ones will never cease. You'll never wake up one day and the day has not taken place. No. Day and night, they happen on the face of the earth. At least in certain places, it might be day and in other places, night. But there will be night and day on the face of the earth. Those are constant for the rest of your life as long as you know it and as long as you've remembered it in your existence. Somebody say amen. That's why I said, for example, when you look at a yard, the Hebrew word for Yah is Shana, right? Shana, S-H-A-N-N-A-H, Shana, right? And Shana has two definitions in the Hebrew, right? Because some words or many words in the Hebrew actually have two definitions. Why? Because of the dual kind of the voice of God, you know? God spoke once and twice I heard. You understand what I'm saying? God spoke once and twice I've heard. It's a principle that many Hebrew words don't come as one interpretation. They usually come with a dual interpretation, a two-way kind, a two-way of definition. Right? You understand? And the first definition of the word Yah, Shana, it means uh, the repetition of things, the doing again of things. You understand? The doing again of a thing. The repetition of a thing. The state where a thing repeats itself again. The repetition of an issue. The situation and circumstance where things look like they're the same. Repeated. You understand? They alter. They are done again. They are similar. They are one and the same. Eh? But you know, they have the word called okusana. The same. It's shana. It's amazing that even the Hebrew it's shana. You understand? So the repetition, the same thing, the doing of a thing. The first definition is the constant things that repeat themselves. So in a year, for example, 
the earth goes around the sun. It is the sun in the center, right? And the further the planet from the sun, the heat and the movement also changes, and then the day. For example, in Mars, for here we have 24 hours. In Mars, it's 27 hours make a day. So the further the planet is from the sun, the difference of the day, right? So, like the earth goes around the sun. That's the same thing. It will repeat itself every year, every day. You understand? Summer is always there. Fall is always there. Winter is always there. Spring is always there. Those things never change. They are constant. Astrophysicists tell you that things that have been constant from the beginning of the world, they have been constant. They repeat themselves. They are the same. They represent themselves again and again in the same way. For as long as the earth remains, there will be cold and there will be heat. There will be summer and there will be winter. There will be day and there will be night. Those will never cease. For as long as the earth remains, those things will never change. They are constant. They are constant. You understand? They are repeated again and again and again and again. You get it? Now, because of that kind of experience, in the spirit world, right, the spirit world also responds to the constant things differently or in a, in a very unique way. You, you, you get where I'm coming from? Now, however, even though Ya, Shana, means same and repeated, similar, it also has another definition called change, which looks like a paradox, a sort of dichotomy, huh? an opposite of things, repeating to do again, but again to change or alter. Hello? In one point it tells us that there is a repetition of things to do again the same thing, but again, on the other hand, it gives us the definition of to change, to alter. Yet we are altering. How can we change and alter, yet we are repeating the same thing? Are you following what I'm saying? So there's questions for somebody who is studying, for a student. Why is it that they are giving us a definition of constant things, repeated the same way, looking alike? And yet in another definition, they are giving us a picture of changing and altercation. Why? Because those laws work concurrently. In the sense that there are things that are constant in the world, like day and night, summer and heat, cold and winter, seed and harvest. But there are also things that change even under the constant. For example, your body changes. Huh? You grow older. You grow beard. Your voice deepens. Eh? Primary characteristics of adolescence. <laughs> yeah, some of you, you, one year back, you were smaller. Some of you, one year back, you were bigger. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you, one year back, you were students, and now you are graduates. So yet, under the same repetition of years, winter, summer, cold, days and nights, the things have repeated themselves, but a particular change has taken place in your life. You have graduated. Some of you last year, you were single. Now this year, you are married. You understand? <laughs> the days are the same. The dates are existing, but they are changing. There are changes in the numbering. Last year was 2017. This year is 2018. You understand? There is a change of the number. Even though it's the repetition of things done again and things similar to prayer, but again, the years have changed. Now what was seven has become eight, and next year is going to become nine. So the law of constant works with the law of change. You understand? The law of constant works with the law of change. Never forget that. Say it again. The law of constant works with the law of change. Say it again. Say the law of constant works with the law of change. Say it one more time. The law of constant works with the law of change. Yes. That even though there are constant things in your life, there are also things in your life 
that have to and have changed. Are you following me? Now here is the trouble, the challenge. The challenge is having constant things in your life. And then you look at you, and the change that takes place is not progressive. You understand what I'm saying? Last year you did not have a job. This year you don't have a job, but your body has grown older. And your bones have become weaker than last year. Yes, there is change. But whatever change has taken place has not been positive in your life. Who understands what I'm saying? You can grow older. There's a change. Or maybe you changed the house where you live. But your finances have not changed. You paid the same amount of money, the same amount of money you were given last year, or even worse, this year you've been given less or you've received less as a business person than you did last year. So yes, change has worked in your life, but it has worked negatively. It has worked overtly on your life. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? We are okay if the changes that are taking place in our lives are taking us to another level of glory. But we are disturbed, we are taken out of our line of pattern when the things that change in our lives have not added on us, are not positive, or in one way or another have brought a sort of regression. When you lose a loved one, when you lose this, when you lose that, when your life does not change, yet you are constantly doing things that should be or ought to be adding on you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the principle takes us back to where I began from in Genesis 8.22. You have no control on cold. You have no control on heat. You have no control on summer. You have no control on winter. You have no control on the day. You have no control on the night. But you have control on seed time. Am I preaching to somebody? You have control on seed time. In there is your niche. In there is your portal. In there is your breakthrough. In there is your answer. In there is your miracle. In there is the only solution as of whether you are going to have a positive change in the things that are constant or you're going to stay the same. Seed time and harvest. You might not even know how much harvest there is, but your seed will determine your harvest. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor that my seed determines my harvest. Say it again and say, my seed determines my harvest. Are you following what I'm trying to say here? When God created the earth in Genesis, you realize he created the herb, and the Bible says, and it's seed. You understand? He says, the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself. After the kind God saw that it was good. Everything came with its seed. Everything came with its seed. Everything came with its seed. Physical, human being, you understand? Varial sperm is what gives seed. Potent sperm is what gives seed. And children, in that regard, are also called the seed of Abraham. Children are seed. You, you, you get where I'm coming from? They are, they are the pattern that reminds us that something has changed positively in our lives. Actually, children are a blessing. But you should look at your child as a seed, not as a harvest. You should look at your child as a seed. Everything you're doing in this child is a seed. When you speak words in their lives, they're seeds. When you take them to school, you're planting. When you, whatever you're doing, you're planting. At one point, they become a harvest. When they become a potential uh, advantage to the society and community with which you've raised them. Are you following what I'm saying? 
you can finish this year and look back from the beginning and nothing has changed on you except, like I said, negative change. Your clothes have grown older. You understand? Your payments are still the same, but they're too much then because you took a loan and, and, and paying that loan has been trouble. And because paying that loan has been trouble, it has also come with its challenges of now trying to pay interest over the loan that you borrowed and this principal as well. And then you can't make ends meet. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're growing older. You've believed God. You've spoken in tongues. You understand it? The law of the constant works with the law of change. The constants are there to help you predict what is predictable. And the change is there for you to determine what you want in the predictable. Somebody shout hallelujah. The day and night never ceases. The summer and winter never ceases. The cold and heat never ceases. And all of those are beyond human doing. You cannot determine the cold. You cannot determine the heat, I said. You cannot determine the summer. You cannot determine the winter. You cannot determine the day. You cannot determine the night. You cannot determine those. But the first one, seed time and harvest, I said, you can determine whether to plant or not to plant. It's your choice. And that's, I said, that is where your window is. The only problem today is every time people talk about seed time, People have spoiled the word seed. They've made it look like it's only about money, 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 money. Every time we talk about seed, many people think it's money, 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 money. So anything outside that, many people don't understand. As I said, even children, they are our seed. The children are seed. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that is why I told people, if you're a parent right now, and you're listening to me, there is a way. To make your children be what you want them to be now. There is a way, according to the scripture. You look at people who are struggling, you realize there's something in their past that has to do with the way they were handled a certain way. Parents, we have a big, big, big responsibility on our children turn out. Because again, God has told you, seed. This is seed. Your child is a seed. Your child is not in the cold and heat. Your child is not in the summer and winter. Your child is not in the day and night. Your child is in the portion of seed. Like you can determine your harvest by how you plant when seed time comes. You can also determine how your child will be. Hallelujah. A study was released a couple of years ago, three or four, and they did a research on deaf children. Children that were born deaf. I don't know if some of you have heard of that. They did a research on deaf children. Children that were deaf. So they got a sample space of about 5,000 parents family from where they had children that were dead. And research proved that 97%, I think it was 97 or 95% of the children who were born dead, their parents used to quarrel a lot when the woman was pregnant. Can you believe that? And this was released in a scientific journal. Every time they would ask these people, were there times you argued when your wife was pregnant. Yeah, yeah, we argued a lot. Over this, over that, she had a temper, I had this, and you know women's hormones, they can change when they're pregnant. They used to quarrel with their wives. And how is it so that this child comes out of the womb and they are not hearing? Except it means that when the kid was hearing this quarrel, somehow a certain mutation took place in the system of this kid not to hear. They didn't want to hear negative energy. So they come into the world and they are deaf. Why? Because they do not want to hear what they were hearing when they are still in the womb. And it's amazing they are hearing. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why the day you become pregnant, that is the... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Start speaking. You understand it? Eh? Start speaking positive. Avoid quarreling when you're pregnant. Avoid it. 
Don't cut a wire. Don't speak negative words when you're pregnant. Give the child positive all through. You're going to be amazed at the kid you're going to have. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because children are seed. I don't know who I'm helping. How you talk to them. How you respond to them. You understand? It's like when we're growing up. Eh? I was talking to, to a child psychologist. And she said, you know when you're dealing, for example, with children? Hmm? Some children like crying for nursing. The kid just sits there and cuts it away. <laughs> Don't fold them. You, you, you know that, haven't you? Now, kids can just cut it a random wire, and the kid just falls down and cries. Yeah? And sometimes you want to teach this kid that I'm not always going to attend to you when you fall. Isn't it? So you ignore them. They cry, and then they realize that, you know what, eh? these tears are not helping. <laughs> then they stand up and do other things, isn't it? That's what usually happens. But they say, don't put them in the habit of thinking that every time they cry, they are going to get what they want. So don't attend to them immediately. But as a parent, there is a math you have to do when you know that now the point has been taken home. Before they stop crying, reach out and say that at least let them know that you'll take long to respond, but you've responded. You understand? Because some of you don't. So the kid keeps quiet until they even sleep out. Now, child psychologists have said that kids who are left like that, they became sadists and psychopaths when they grew up. You fall down, they rip you. <laughs> Do you know there are people who are sadists? And me, I know people, the moment you fall down, even if it's the worst fall, they'll first laugh and die. <laughs> you're, in, you're in pain meanwhile. You look at those people, many times they left them to, to cry until they slept. That is why you don't feel sorry when people are falling down. Oh, when people have problems, some of you laugh. One time somebody fell, a girl fell, and I saw another person die. I, I have a sibling, I'll not say their name. If you fall, they must first laugh. I'm asking. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you see, it's seed. You, you're doing something for your children. You're doing something in them. The way you're talking to them determines a lot. The way you respond to them determines a lot. The way you attend to their brains when they start thinking and communicating to you. The way you open up but yet put boundaries on them. You understand? Speak this way. You understand? One time a parent called me and told me, ah, my kid is very smart. A postman came on the door and told me, I saw you. Why did it? And, and I told her, no, 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 woman. That is not how children talk to elders. You're clapping because your girl is a satin, but she's going to talk to a man like that that one day. And I couldn't blame her because she was a single parent, but she did not understand the math of how assertive their child can be because it's good for children to be assertive. When children are assertive, they, they are safe. It's true that when a child is assertive, they're safe from certain things. Eh? Because the child can be told things, but they have, they have the right to ask questions. Not in these days where even kids are taught homosexuality. In our schools, if your child is assertive, she'll ask the teacher, is that right? Yeah? They'll ask the question. You, you get my point? That's because it helps also to protect them from the unnecessary. Otherwise, also your kids being there to give in themselves in everything they say, it's also foolish. You have to teach them a certain sort of assertiveness. To ask the questions, they have to ask that help. But also, this woman had not taught the child the boundary of how to talk to a person who is older than them. And she was busting, oh, she asked the postman. I told her, no, 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 no. Yes, it's good for the child to be assertive, but how do they address, address who? An older person. You see? But all this comes in hand with you choosing to be a parent. Parents. You understand what I'm saying? Television is raising our children. So now the seed. It's submitting itself to the deception of the world. You understand? You, you, you get where I'm coming from. So, children are seeds. Tell your neighbor, children are seeds. Now, let's go back to the special thing I wanted to, attach, to, 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 to bring. So, he said, like I said, you don't have, you don't have influence over cold heat, summer, and winter, day and night, but you have influence over seed time. You have influence over seed time. Be not deceived. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. Isn't it? You shall reap. Now, 
God has not created you to live in the constant and have negative change or no change. Some of you, no change. No, God has not created you to have a life of constants in your life and have negative change or no change. In fact, when, 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 when the Bible speaks of the newness of life, when the Bible speaks of how you're begotten in the newness of life, he says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism in two deaths, just like as Christ has raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we should also walk in the newness of life. When you study the Greek there in the words of the newness of life and connect it to what I'm trying to talk about, newness of life means a positive change because the life of God is infused in your constant to bring the change that is desired. Newness of life. Newness of life means that new stuff is supposed to be happening in your life every day, every time. He says, behold, I do a new thing. You understand what I'm saying? So when God starts to say, behold, I do a new thing, for it shall spring forth, it shall not delay. You realize this new thing, even in the pretext of that scripture, was actually the seed of David. Jesus Christ coming as our forerunner was the first newness, ultimate newness. That new thing before was the new, the new thing. was When you became born again, the Bible says you became a new creation. The old is first and now the new. The, 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 the new. You changed course from a certain old nature of constant and negative change to positive progress. That is why the path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. That is why the longer they live, the brighter they shine. That is why as you behold in a mirror, you're transposed, translated, metamorphosed from one glory to glory, from one increase to increase, from face to face, from grace to grace. You are supposed to go upward. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You are supposed to go upward. You're changed. Even in the constants of the day, the night, or whatever, yes, we're not going to change that. There will be changes of the years and everything. But besides your bodily changes, besides your, your, your normal changes, besides your positive and your negative, there has to be a very clear upward movement of new things happening in your life. You understand? God has to change your car. He has to change your house. He has to change your spirit. He has to advance you to another level in the spiritual realm. He has to change something. There has to be something new. There is nothing that disturbs a person like either being stuck or having negative change. That is the frustration that many of you have failed to explain. Because it's true you're growing older. It is true your body is changing, but certain things have refused to come new. You've looked for a job, you've tried to do things, but things have not changed. You remember when we used to go, some of, you, some of us who had the opportunity to go to school. You remember boarding school, I mean, not they, but boarding school. When you came from boarding school, you were curious to see what has changed at home. How many of you remember that? How many of you, don't, you didn't care whether anything changed? Come for deliverance now. <laughs> I'm joking. But you always came home and checked what is new. Hmm? Has the tree grown older? Is the grass greener? Is my daddy by a day? You understand? What has changed at home? Isn't it? Because you've been three months away. Isn't it? If you... For those people who live abroad, when they come, the first thing is, eh, kampare kuze. You understand? Why? Because there's a consciousness that inclines you to check what is new. You, you get my point? Even in a marriage relationship, you can't be a constant. You understand? Certain things have to change. You were just thinking funny last year. You become better. Even your partner, he has to see that there is something good that has changed in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Imagine your children are growing and your finances are constant. You understand? You were taking them in nursery. Nursery was cheaper. Now secondary. 
Now you've added another child. Now the third child, you're still earning the same amount of money, living in the same house. You understand? There's a frustration that comes to you as a man. There's a frustration that comes to you as a woman. There's a frustration that comes every time we see change and it is either the same, I mean, undesired change or regressive change. And I have good news for you that God has not intended. It's not where in the will of God for you to stay constant without positive change. Somebody shout hallelujah. But the mystery is in the seed, seed time. You've read the scripture where he says, if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap of the Spirit life everlasting, the way everlasting. But if you sow to the flesh, the Bible says, you will reap corruption. That is the primary principle of the seed concept. It's not money. It's not cars. It's not breakthrough. That Galatians 6, 8 is the primary principle of the seed concept. If you sow to your flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. That is negative energy. Regression in change. But if you sow to the Spirit, you shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So the question is, what does it mean to sow to the flesh? And what does it mean to sow to the Spirit? Because the very word there for sowing, seed, zera, is the very word for sow. In fact, the literal should be, if you seed to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh corruption. And if you seed to the Spirit, you shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Meaning that whatever you sow to your flesh, whatever you do in the carnal sense, you will reap carnality. And whatever you do in the spiritual sense, you will reap of the Spirit. There are many people who sow to the carnal without it knowing. Because many carnals have now come up, they appear as spiritual. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many carnalities appear as spiritual. Some people come and say, oh, the Lord told me, and I wish I want to tell this person, the Lord doesn't speak that way. And you see this person sowing to the carnal, to the flesh. You see they are sowing to their flesh. And you know they are going to reap corruption. But who are, who are you, Munang, if God has spoken to someone? Do you know how many things are done in the flesh and people say, ah, me, the Lord spoke to me. But when you go to analyze how God speaks, he does not speak that way. He does not speak that way. That's why I said we must draw this opposite very clearly. We must demarcate this, di this dichotomy. That, to, to know, am I sowing to the flesh or am I sowing to the spirit? That's why the principle is whether your change is going to be positive. Mugamu, leave. Some of you think we just going to say, you are going far, and then you are going to, you are going to stretch forth, then you imagine that you are, no. It's, it's more than that. Understand the seed and the harvest. Understand the seed and the harvest. You understand? You are a seed yourself, primarily. You are the planting of the Lord. Isn't it? You are the planting of the Lord, primarily. Before you even think about the other seeds in the world, you are the planting of the Lord. But you see, many people sow to the flesh. They sow to their carnal nature. There's many ways to sow in the flesh. But because of time, I'll give you one. If I have time, I'll add next Sunday. If I don't, kesera, kesera. Let me give you one example because of time. Just one example. There are many, 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 many individuals have seen who saw to the flesh because they have a warped revelation of God. You understand? Let me show you a scripture. The, the Bible speaks of 
the people who the God of this world has blinded. Yeah? Let me give you an example. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Hmm? Begin from verse 3. It says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 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 Right? Now, if you see full colon, hmm? he is now explaining the lost, what makes them lost. Huh? The next verse says, in whom the God of this world, the word there for world is not cosmos, it's air, age, the God of his age. Not the God of this world, cosmos. The God of this world, cosmos, that's Satan. Here, they're not talking about just Satan. I'll explain that. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Right? List the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Who is the image of God should shine on them. The light of the glorious God, that they should see Christ in his very person and image. That they should see him in his very image, that he is. That's what the disciples tell Jesus when they tell him, show us plainly the Father. Show us plainly. We don't want a hidden understanding, a, a very, uh, you, you understand, coagulated idea of who God is. We think we know him, but we don't understand him. So we relate and worship a God we know not. It's like he tells the Samaritans, you worship whom you know not. So many of us, you think you understand God, but you honestly don't. Even your prayer, praise to him. Some have even turned the image of this God into a corruptible, graven image that can be worshipped and seen physically like these other small gods. Many people, they saw to that God who is not the God you and I should. Now, of course, it's very easy for you to think, ah, no, no, the one they're talking about is not me. Do you understand what I'm saying? The one they're talking about is not me. But the God of this world, the God of this age, blinding the minds of them which believe not, lifts the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Who is the image of God? Should shine on them. I'll give you an example. You find a man who has been born again for 30 years, born again. Do I doubt that he's born again? No. And then you hear he's fighting grace with a guy. Now, some of you think that scripture is for people who are not born again. There are people who are Christians. And the God of his age has blinded them. How do you fight grace with this? Do you understand what I'm saying? How do you fight? Do you get where I'm coming from? They can only fight you when you don't have a seed. You can't fight a person who knows how to plant in the spirit. You can't. You can't. You can think that you can because you're blinded. But when you see, when your eyes finally see, because if you fight Grace Rubega, look at, are you going to fight all of these ones? You understand? The word is in me, it is in you, it is in her, it is in the other one. How, how, how many are you going to shut up? We've already reproduced ourselves. Am I lying? No. But that's how people think. It's not people who are not born again. No. Not everybody who does not believe is an unbeliever. No, we have unbelieving unbelievers. But we also have unbelieving believers. We have people who are believers, but they don't have faith. They don't believe a certain way. This God of the age, I'll give you an example. You've heard of the blindness in part that comes because of the law. Let's just give an example. Now, if the letter kills, how can you enter the seed principle huh, and plant the letter and expect positive change? No, think about it. And how many of you know that the law is to the flesh? Like grace is to the spirit. That's why they call it the spirit of grace. Isn't it? But the law is to the flesh, like grace is to the spirit. Now, if a man has not embraced the grace message, this grace message, this grace message. <laughs> In fact, it will interest you to know that 
part of the definition, what they call the metonyms of the seed. Righteousness imputed is part of the principle of the seed concept. If you study the Greek. Righteousness imputed. Let me explain what I mean. There is power in knowing that you're the righteousness of God. But now you take these things lightly. But there is such a, a mighty power in knowing, not in just speaking it, not in acting like you believe it. You know, many of you sit under the great message, but many of you don't honestly believe it. If we enter you, there's mixtures. In some parts you're legal, in others you're grace, and in some parts you're legal, then you're grace. And, and you must draw that distinction. You, mu you must. You can't have the law and the grace. You can't. You can't. You try. You will not. There is no such thing as balancing grace and the law. It's not there. It's always grace and faith, not the law and grace. No. Many of you, you sit in these meetings and think you understand the grace message, but you don't. There are people who even preach it, but they don't have grace on their life. Say this is a grace preacher, yes, but you look at the guy and there is nothing working on him that is grace. Serendipity is absent. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. But there is a point where in life you start to see grace. You start to see grace in your finances, grace in your marriage, grace in your career, grace in your thoughts, grace in your education. Now you see the favor of God, the tangible thing of God finding you before you even seek it. Hallelujah, somebody. Do I have a witness? That is why we preach grace. Because when we preach grace, we are positioning you to know what to plant. When Paul said you reap what you sow, he wasn't simply talking about when you do good, you'll get good. That's legal mind. Remember, we are in a dispensation where God doesn't reward us on performance. So if we are in a dispensation where God does not reward us on performance, Deeper than just that. Eh? Even when he's talking to the Galatians, you realize it was more of a knowledge issue that caused them to go into carnality. And when he speaks of you reap what you sow, many carnal people look at that scripture only in the results of the knowledge. They look at just the manifestations of these carnalities, but they don't look at the spirit, the knowledge that the people have prior to the carnal kind of things they do into then when he tells them you reap what you sow. Our true principle of seed is the message. Firstly, get the message right and obey the message. Paul speaks of how you have obeyed that form of doctrine. Learn to take divine instruction. Some of you, you are rebellious. You're rebellious. It's in you. You don't listen but you attend service. You're faithful attenders, but you're rebellious. You don't receive spiritual instruction. How are you going to break through? How are you going to see success when you have rebellion on your spirit? It is marked on you. Some of you say badge of honor like persecution is to, to men of God. You, for you, you even pride in being. You, you don't listen to anybody. Put it in your spirit to obey instruction. Just put it in your spirit to obey the word of God. 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 I'll tell you the story. There's this person I know. I knew this person for so many years. And this person, as long as I remember them, they've been stuck. For as long as I remember them, they've been stuck. So they get a job. And they work this job for six, seven years, and nothing has changed in their life. Eight years, nine years, ten, twelve years, this person's life has failed to change financially. So I sit this brother down and I tell him, look, I have known you for so many years. You know that the Bible speaks of your giving, your tithe, your first fruit. The Bible says it, doesn't it? He said, yes. Ask him, do you do the principle? Says, man, apostle, eh? sometimes I get so stuck eh, that I also don't know what to what, what to do. I get disturbed. I get so stuck. And I told him, now, okay, of course he doesn't know what I know. And he doesn't see things the way I see them. But in my head I'm asking myself, dude, how are you going to bypass this eh, principle? Eh? 
and somehow bypass it eh? and then come to glory land and stretch forth. How, how are we going to do it? Up to today I've failed to understand how some people think. These are principles, isn't it? So, I tell him do it. You think he had? He didn't hear. Another two years. He called me. They stole everything of mine in the house. Asked him, how long have you built these things in the house? Six years. Some guy came and carried everything when they were away. Everything for six years. He's not been promoted for, for more than ten years. What he has made for six years has all gone. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just giving you a simple principle. Because many of you, you say, if I don't give money, you'll not understand. But I'll explain something else. They rob everything. The Spirit of the Lord extends grace on my spirit. I ask him how much what was worth the things they robbed. Because you made the police report. He, gets me, he tells me the amount. The Lord tells me, give him all the money. I got all the money he needed and he filled his house again. Thank you. And I told him, do your principles. He says, this month I'm giving first fruits to my church. I told him, congratulations, too. Take it to your man of God. Right? Because he was a friend. He spoke it with his mouth. That month he spoke it, he didn't give first fruit. The second month they fired him. He's going in two years without a job. Now he's, he's almost dying. He's lost everything. And it repeats itself every time. And you hear them teach it. And you still float the principles. And then you come for a prayer request. Apostle. <laughs> the business has failed. My work is not... What do you want me to do for you? There is no special prayer. Where in the light to yourself, ask for miracle money, speak. There is no miracle prayer. It is not there. About Uganda, it is not there. Let us not lie to ourselves. Listen, these are principles. If you believe the word, you believe in it, it will work for you. You think you're going to doubt the word and somehow we continue praying for you and you doubt the word of God upon your life? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what draws success for the person listening to me now and the person who isn't. Even when we proclaim false prophetic words upon you, they are seeds in you. But the ground in which these seeds fall is matter. It, is a, it matters. Because your seed is your heart. You have to guard it. You have to tend it. Because out of it flow the issues of life. Grace the message. is not just, that's why people say, oh, they're attacking the grace message. I don't mind, let them attack it. Satan attacks this message because he knows it works. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows it what? It works. But whether you want it or not, this message will work for you. You have to make the decision in your spirit. To receive the word of God and take every instruction, if it is from the word. If the Bible says forgive yourself, forgive yourself. If the word of God says pray, do what? Pray. If the word of God says do this, if you receive instruction, and the instruction of God says this, do exactly what the word of God says, and just watch God answer you. Some of you think you're just going to draw away the word and throw it away. And then you come to church and then they pray for you and miracles happen. Bananga, Baluganda. Those things don't work. This word is life to them that find it and medicine on their bones. Invest time in the word of God. Invest time in the word. Because whatever you sow, you shall reap. You're sowing the word of God in your spirit. Get it on a CD. Attend services. We don't need to tell you after today. You know, the, up to today there are people who don't have priority for God. God is not their priority. One time I asked the church member, why didn't you pray? Honestly, Apostle, I have no reason. I looked at the church. The Bible says do not give up the fellowship. It says do not give up the fellowship as some have done. And what has happened to those who did? Hey, they hit shipwreck. 
You don't just come to service. Just move. Ah, I had nothing today. I said, let me go just go and pray. Mwana, ngobo joga katonda. Omuyamba, you help him when you want. When you have time, you pray. No, no. In and out of season. Come to service. Just allow the word of God to sink in your spirit. If you miss a service, look for the CD and the recording. Pay the price and get to it. Do everything to make sure that at least separate yourself from anything, but don't ever kill the flow of the word of God in your spirit. Don't! Because we are as a result of the words we have heard. As a result of the... Let me tell you, I wish some of you understand what it means to take the word of God. To honor the word of God. To be faithful to the word of God. To know that when the word of God has said I should do this, that's it. No question. Be a doer. Be a doer. Be a doer. Just be a doer. Just be a doer. Primary. Just be a doer. When the word says pray, pray. When the word says preach, preach. When you receive the instruction, reach out to the lost. Go. Look for the lost. It's for your good. Do it. But then the person who doesn't tell, doesn't partner, doesn't reach out, doesn't take instruction on the altar three years, doesn't uh, respond to the words spoken, fears on the street, everything for you, you don't want to do. But when it comes to pray, then you get up and say, yeah. <laughs> Woo, I feel it. I feel it. Continue feeling it. <laughs> Continue feeling it. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. See time. It is time for you. Let me tell you. Huh? These things you see in Panero, we did them in campus. Kati, what we are doing now, you wait for the next 10 years. 20, you'll see. Now we are planting for 20 years. 30, 40. Mama, I'm many years ahead. You were planted when I was still in my university days. We claimed God. You understand what I'm saying? Of course, we looked crazy. Some of you, you don't even have special times of God, with God. TV. You understand? You need to have some special time. Invest, read. Invest in the word of God. Be a person that you know the word. Now you know the word. You might have come here because the girl told you, man, you understand? That you're the one I came for. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Sowing to the flesh means setting yourself against the course of the spirit of truth. Simple. And sowing to the Spirit is setting your course subject to the Spirit of truth. You, you get my point? For me, I told God, and he knows it in my heart, I told him, Lord, just help me read it and understand it and do it. It shall be enough. Help me do it. You get it? I want to do the word of God. These are things people don't want to listen to. But I'm trying to make you understand that if many of you examine yourselves, eh, you have rebellion in part. It's there. It might be small, but it's there. You've rebelled on an issue in your life. When you examine yourself, what went into Choga and Yokuta? There are things you've just refused to. So you know what, God, here, you, you, when you search yourself, there are things you've refused to release and say, you know what, now this is not worth it. You get my point? I'm not judging you. Don't feel judged here. Feel loved enough to tell you the truth. You get my point? But also, I also want to help you not to deceive yourself. Because when he you, when you says, be not deceived, eh, or do not deceive yourself, some people deceive themselves. Do not be deceived. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Some of you, you lie to yourself and think that you're going to float principles. And then somehow a miracle comes from up there and lands on you. Overflowing. It ain't going to happen. It ain't happen that way. 
Submission is a principle. If you choose to submit to a ministry, Bandangi, sit in the ministry and submit. You get my point? It's a principle. Because submission is a planting. You understand? You remember people are submitted. The Bible calls them planted in the house of the Lord. Why are they planted? Because submission is one of the seeds of the Christian life. Do you have a spiritual authority? Are you really submitted to this person? Or you just come to service? Or you have a political idea of that is my spiritual father? <laughs> Do you have a clear submission? Can you tell somebody that this is actually where you belong? I'm confused. Sit in a ministry. Submit to a ministry and serve. Temuko just in submission. Get something, however small it is, do it. Because the word of God has results. Don't think you're going to dodge that thing. Uh-uh. You look at all the people I've pastored for long. And if somebody somehow has failed, you check their lives. There's like a sort of rebellion. It's there. Small. can be little, but it's there. But nobody submits to this message and their life does not change. You might be delayed. Yes, continue planting. True to form one day as long as the earth remains. That is why you believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because he says he knew what he had planted. God could not let him die without seeing results. He invests your time in the gospel. The things these kids are doing, they're the same things we did 10 or 15 years ago. Cleaning chairs. Me in the church I was, I was cleaning chairs. I was in setup. Me, I was in setup. I was doing setup. Apostle Grace, I was doing setup. But what they did not know, that this guy arranging chairs one day was going to be a man of God. So, don't look at people who are doing things temporarily and Look at them there and think, mm, that we don't see. No. The day it breaks for them. And I've seen the mighty over the years come down. You've also been around. Enough. You look in your neighborhood where you were raised. The rich kids who used to be rich. Then you look back and say, hey, I that guy was rich. Eh? They are the ones who drove cars, went for us, we are in Onibumeme. And then things change years later. And you see, the family is poor, the sons are poor, everyone is poor, things have changed, the cars are, are not there anymore, they just have old photos, you reach the house and it can also show you that this man was once rich. Why should you pattern yourself under that kind of order? You get it? Me, I decided that when I enter this thing and it breaks, it will only go up where the and I will die a rich man. You, say. you get my point? But more than that, those other areas of your life, do you live money? Those other areas in your life, husband, ask your wife, are we a seed to this ministry? Are we a seed to the gospel? Or we are just receiving? Are we a seed to the gospel, to the kingdom? Are we a seed to the kingdom? If we are not a seed, how can we be a harvest? Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you a seed to the ministry? Do you add something to the gospel? Or for you, you just come every Sunday and listen and then go. Bambi. Then you bring your head. And Bambi. Then you say, totally fair. No, it's fair. But he's only saying, like the guy I paid for and replaced his stuff that had been stolen. So it wasn't stolen again. But that doesn't mean that everything of his life was going to remain straight. Yes, I'll pray for you and the miracle will happen. But it will not fix the bigger story of your life. The bigger story of your life is going to go back to the seed and harvest principle. Be not deceived. God cannot be mocked whatsoever thou sowest. Thou shalt reap. What's the equation of grace here? To help you to sow. How do I know? He gives seed to the soul. He gives seed to the soul. And then you realize the next verse, bread to the eater. 
And then after that, fruit of multiplication. Spirit of multiplication. Increase of the fruit. You see the principle? Seed to the sower, bread for your food, and then increase of your righteousness. But the bread for your food does not precede the seed for your sowing. The seed for your sowing precedes the bread for your food, and the bread for your food, then the increase of your righteousness. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The increase, the fruit of your righteousness. So, what am I talking about here? You have a seed. In other words, there is something you can do. There is always something you can do. There, is, there will always be seed. That's what grace does. Grace guarantees the seed for the sower. No sower seeks a seed. No sower shall desire a seed. That's the reason of grace. Grace has given you the seed. Grace has given you the word. The word is a seed, isn't it? But apostle, I don't have money. Yes, but you have the word. Isn't it? You don't have money, but you have the word. Don't you have the word? Speak. Speak it. Hey, even if you don't have money, wake up every morning and what? Speak and keep saying it. Hey, that's the seed. Plant it. Plant it. You understand? I'm rich. I'm rich. Before you know that, somebody will give you a katen cake. Then you remember the katen cake and say, hey, there's a top I've wanted to buy. You understand? So you remember your top, you buy it. Then the kastrike uh, trampo to some village. Listen, when you get that 10,000, Remember the Lord's time. But I don't have a job. Hey, okay, let us wait for a job to come. Then you learn to give. You understand? Let us wait for a job. Me, I told, let me tell you, when I was at campus, I used to set off aside a very small amount and save it because I used to believe that I have enough. And I went on in the village there in Mokono and I looked for a family that was so poor and could not afford fees and they had a little boy called Ronnie. And I, I discovered that there were schools in Mukono that were educating children during that time at 50,000 a term. 50K. So every time I would get money, save up my pocket money to educate Ronnie. And tell you, I tell you what the truth is, there are times I, I bought buns, not because I was craving for bread, <laughs> but because Ronnie had to go to school. You get my point? And Ronnie started senior six under my little pocket money. And there are sometimes my friends who saw me do it and they also came on board. Some of them also used to give and then we used to use that to buy Ronnie books and shoes for school. But that seed was not so I would get. That seed was because the word of God, the primary seed that God had placed in my spirit was that I'm rich. My heart was rich. That's what they call a liberal soul. What does the Bible promise? It shall be made. It shall be made fat. Fat there means anointed. The anointing shall stir whatever it needs. You get my point? That is why I look at these students sometimes who get their pocket money. Eh? And they give. Eh? They give. Those with small money. 1,000 shillings will call in. Then you look at them. I don't feel sorry for them. No, I am happy for them. Because I know as long as the earth remaineth, there is a harvest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many, many of you, if we check why you're poor, now I've answered you. Praise God. Or some of you who think you're rich. No, give it time. You'll realize. Like I told people one day, God doesn't need to take away your money. He just needs one day to raise a, a bus so high that your money looks small. I told people there was a time 50,000 used to buy land. Do I have a witness? There was a time land cost 50,000 in Uganda. Then okay, we'd buy, then people were in one shilling, two shillings. Now, 50K can't even buy lunch for some people. God doesn't need to take away from you. No. He just raises the bar so high that one day you wake up and your 50,000 is nothing. He doesn't need to take away. He just raises the bar. You wake up in a day and a night, in a summer and cold winter day, 
where the economy has changed. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that is money. Look at the aspect of your life as an individual. Am I obedient to the word of God? Be quick to obey. Tell your neighbor, be quick to obey. Praise God. Just take a minute and tell God, I want to sow right. I'm not talking about money. Every aspect of your life. Come on, speak to God. Come on, speak to God. Somebody raise your hands in the air. I need to minister to some people. Come on, where do you go? Take it, 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 take stuck for some time and you're tired of being stuck in the mighty name of Jesus God is doing something new He's doing something new Power to go! Power to go! There's a visitation on your house There's a visitation in your family Your children Your relationship I hear the spirit of promotion. I hear the spirit of promotion. Being stuck is no longer your story. You shall not be stuck anymore. Get out of that stuck position. I speak to your finances. I speak to your relationship. I speak to your vision. I speak to your experiences. Move! 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 Oh, Lord. Move! Thank you, Holy Ghost. Receive it. You will not be stuck, said the Lord. 
You will not be stopped. 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 I release you from any form of struggle. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 God says you will not struggle. 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 I relieve your hand from struggle. I relieve your hand from strife. I relieve your hand from struggling with me. I relieve your hand from struggling in finances. I relieve your hand from struggling from the words of men. From struggling in your relationship. From struggling in your vision. From struggling in your experiences. From struggling. You'll not struggle. 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 You will 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 not struggle to have children. You will not have trouble. You will not struggle. You will not struggle. You will not struggle. I cancel it by the seed of the wife. I cancel struggle. I cancel strength. I refuse that you be stuck. You will not be stuck. In the mighty name of Jesus. Upward, upward, from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from increase to increase, from glory to glory, from victory to victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Venero, make manifest.